And this is the Tay Tay. Trying to get ready for bed. I don't know why I didn't think about using my walker earlier. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Again, new viewers, I was involved in an auto accident years ago and it messed up my shoulder, so. Yep. <laughs> you want me to show them their routine or no? Just a little low. Er. Might be enough to do a face, if just. Maybe. Maybe. It's a good thing I brought the other one. Mm hmm. Why is this so itchy? I don't know. Yeast. However, I think before you go to bed, I might give you one of your Aladonia pills. Why? No, well, because you won't be up again until Why two or I three. Doing that wobbly thing. Uh-huh. Can I see it? Yep. I wasn't kidding when I said I used Pond's. Nope. And that's the Pond's makeup remover. And I made, I went to the little store and back today, so I've kind of been on my feet for way too long. More than his back will usually allow for. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'll pay for it. Oh, yeah. I'm already paying for it. Well, why don't you? Because it'll just hurt. Mm -hmm. It'll hurt more. And if any of you had, uh, sciatica or lower back damage you know that sitting on uh, any kind of a hard surface will hurt more you need a towel honey soap soap you mean the soap that's not here the set of fuels okay. it's on the counter behind you okay. it's on the, t on the tub over here one second I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but yeah, my back is not trying to move. I'm all stiff and sore now. Not sponsored. Yep, no sponsoring here. Although yeah. I'm sure if we'll walk this one to me, I will gladly take it. Yep, or ponds or... We like ponds and set of hill like there's no tomorrow. Oh, I know. I will say... It is normal, unfortunately, for me to fall asleep sitting up. Mm-hmm. I'm trying not to get that wet. No, when you get so when you get tired enough, you just shut down. And unlike some of the YouTubers out, out there who are trying to give impressions, we're not trying to give impressions, we're trying to show you how it really is. We're trying to show you the invisible side of it, the stuff that you guys don't normally get to see. And unfortunately, ow! You made that too hot! I'm sorry, guys. Unfortunately, it's not glamorous, and it's not going to be glamorous. Mm -hmm. it's, it is reality, which is what we aim for. Yeah. 
Thank you for giving the camera and showing it. You're welcome, honey. Well, and... And that's the whole thing is that, you know, we're not doing it for glamour. We're doing it to show you how we deal and adapt to... Well, I, I will admit that there is some people out there who... Who do try to glamorize that's even a word, we'll try to glamorize stuff and it, it doesn't work out. <laughs> Look at me, I'm broken. No. It's not that way. It's, oh, you're lucky to be disabled. Um, why? <laughs> why again? Because there's nothing glamorous about it, you guys. There's nothing glamorous about being in pain 24-7. Mm-hmm. And we're, her and I are both in pain 24-7. It's just the amount of pain we're in varies mm -hmm. in that 24-hour period. Well, and the other, the other problem with that is we have our baseline levels. You can be at a baseline pain, and on very rare days, you get below baseline, which mm. is not normal we're usually at baseline and above you know mm -hmm. my shoulders hurting my back's hurting you know yeah it's stuff like that people will now i've taken the what the doctors prescribed for me the lyrica the gabapentin and the ibuprofen and my back's telling me look looked at all of that and went is that all you got So, you know, I just have to grit my teeth and bear it. You got to well, make it through that's, it. Well, and that's the other thing. Like, his pain regimen versus my pain regimen are two completely different things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I use Lyrica as an abortive, not as a pain management. Mm -hmm. For me, the pain management is Ketorolac. Well, along with Ketorolite, you can end up with holes in your stomach if you take it too much. Yeah. So, I have to weigh the option in between Tylenol and Ketorolac. Do I go for my emergency pain med, Ketorolac, or can I get away with taking just plain Tylenol? Mm-hmm. You know, he's on a handful of pills every day. Yeah, twice a day. It's his pain regimen. And on top of that, the ugly side of diabetes that you guys don't see. Yeah. You know, it's, the pain. it's all the finger pricks. It's all the the needle sticks that yeah. he gets, you know? Just want to show him the bruise? Yeah. There's the bruise. That's the bruise from all of the insulin that he has to take. Yep. And you guys can see, like, yeah, even on his tummy, like, the dogs tear him up. Yep. The dogs tear me up. My hands are swollen. My feet swollen. Yeah. You know, of course, part of that was me today, but... You know, you have to have those days where, you, you know. And the other side of that is it's not going to be pretty. Like I oh, said, no. there's a lot of people who try to glamorize it. Now, one a question that I got, even around where we live now, is, you know, I deal with some pretty severe anxiety. Is there any way that I could train my dog to be a service dog? Well, the person who asked me, the dog is nine years old. You're not going to get any working life out of it. By the time the dog is done training, the, the dog will probably be gone. It's the cruel reality of it, mm -hmm. okay? Some dogs you can work based on their lifespan. You can work well into... Into their... Like, Maddie's what, six? Yeah, I expect another ten years out of her. Well... At least... I don't know if I would say 10, but... I, I do, but she's not... It's not like she's doing heavy mobility or, you know, something no. that requires the body to stay in a solid shape. She's no. your epilepsy puppy. Well, yeah, and that's what I was going to say. Is the difference is in between service dogs, and there's so many different types of service dogs. My husband is just getting into it. He didn't know that he qualified... like beforehand when i was looking into getting xena his numbers were out of control 
like 600 plus out of control. It yeah. wasn't just a little bit. It wasn't, oh, you're 30 points over. No, no I was so hundreds. bad that I was getting yeast infections. I almost went blind. You, you still. Know, I still might be. Yeah. My vision is my vision went from from better than 2020 to the left eye is, is legally blind and the right eye can barely keep up. Yeah. So Well, and that's the other thing. Like my eyes versus yours. Mhm. Mm your eyes are more related to your numbers. My eyes aren't. You no. know. I deal with blood sugar issues but not to the extent that he does. Yep. You know, he has to test every day. And even then when his dog is learning to catch the numbers, it's, which is kind of my fault because I forgot to give her like a solid alert for him to know, hey, this is an alert. Yeah. You know, with Mufasa, there's different alerts. Like if he goes to lick my hand, it's usually a migraine. If he licks my face, it's usually a migraine plus allodynia. Mm-hmm. You know, there's different things that Mufasa does that, how do you explain that? That, tell me what he's alerting to. Yeah, and that's that's a good thing because then you could tell me and I can figure out, you know, what, what mi mix of pain pills to give her that's going to stop what's yeah. coming. Yeah. And get it into her so that we can head that off instead of having a full-blown migraine and Aldenia attack. Well, and but. the <coughs> I don't know if I was able to explain this in detail for you guys, but the Elodinia is extreme pain plus third degree sunburn. And yes, I know what that's like because I've had one. Okay. And then imagine a thousand bee stings on top of that. Like all of that hits at once. And if, if that wasn't enough, it's stuff like wearing clothes. Like the everyday wearing clothes. Well, your skin hurts to the point of get it the hell off. Her skin's get hurt. it away from me. Her skin's hurt to the point where I had to turn the fan off on my desk because the wind hurt her her skin. Mm -hmm. So, you know. And it's with not nice. No. And with me and the service dogs, I grew up looking at service dogs and stuff like that as well, let me be blunt. I didn't want to be that weak. I looked at it from... But it's a, not weak. Well, and I look at it from a warrior's point of view. If you're depending on something else, then, you know, you're pretty much done in the fight. Wow. And I'm still trying to make peace with that. Yeah. My, my brain is still going, no, this body is going to keep fighting. And I do every day and, and you do fight you do fight every day the only thing Zena does for you is hey your numbers are getting out of control you know you may not notice it if she notices it great you know oh yeah she's alerted she's got an alert in public before in fact this last time she alerted at the pain doctor's office yeah we were standing outside of the pain doctor and she gives you a nice solid alert yeah. You know. And I love it when she you're, does. You're still learning that, oh, you need to take your dog with you. Yeah, you know, because. With Mufasa and me, Mufasa's my lifeline. Yeah. Like, my, Mufasa is Muf either deal with the attack or don't. Yeah. You know. Well, and for you, it's Mufasa's your lifeline. I'm still dealing with coming from the pet owner versus service dog. And it's it's difficult for me to figure out sometimes, is she trying to play with me? Is she trying to beg for food? Because that of that solid alert. Excuse me, guys. Oh, frijoles. <laughs> uh, that is that being burrito. <laughs> there he goes again. My God. But yeah, no, it's it's different for him, you guys. It's and we maybe this year he'll get into taking her. Well, and I'd lo I want to take her over the summer and stuff and try and work a lot more with her. It's just, you know, I, with, like, like my wife, I only have so many spoons to deal with for the day. Now, yeah. I've been up all day. I went for, what, half a mile walk? 
please. Down to the store and back because we ran out of stuff. And somebody has to do it. We don't have a car. Wow. And then I still have dishes to do on top of that. Well, and you guys... So I have it, to keep going. It doesn't mean that you... Well, you can choose to keep going. However... Oh, I can say screw it and sit down. And, yeah. you know, I do take plenty of rest breaks. Don't get me wrong there, but... Well, and that it's good that you do. It's just that... You know, Mufasa versus Zena. Mm -hmm. Zena's a totally chill dog. She's not... Yeah, until you scare the puppy out of her. And then she zoinks real well. And I say, I say that because she's part Great Dane. And she's white. And she reminds me of Scooby-D. What else is a dog, though? Huh? What else is she? She's a Dalmatian. She's a, great, she's a mix of a Great Dane Dalmatian. Mm-hmm, see? Now. Yeah, I know, I see. We've been working on this for a while. See? Like, she knows I'm here, so she's not doing anything. However... If I go and clank a dish, in, a dish, mm -hmm. and see, this is her asking for. Uh, see, and the big groan that you guys hear uh, is because he can't bend down to get to her. Yeah. You know, so part that's of that too is, far. That's too far down. Yeah, she's trying to jump up and grab treats from him in case of this kind of problem, like right here. Mm-hmm. You know, Mufasa. The only time Mufasa ever jumps up. Uh, and I did get a question about that, by the way. He is not a pit bull. No, he's a black mouth cur. There's a huge difference between the two species, or the two breeds. <laughs> I love you. Well, they're, they're... You guys want to see my dog? I will show you. Move, move. Come here, Weezy. Everybody thinks he's a pit bull and he's not. He's, he's a purebred black mouth cur. You might be seeing a puppy by the end of this year. Why? Because I promised my mom that I would get a female for them to breed. Which, I want to raise puppies. Like, I absolutely love it. You know? Yeah. Our three here are, are fixed, so Mufasa is not going to be a dad, but, yeah. you know... And I we, will, uh, the other thing I will say about that is we got extremely lucky with him. Mm -hmm. There's there's only a handful of these dogs left in the United States. Yeah. Okay. I have to go outside of Colorado to even consider getting a puppy mm -hmm. for his breed. Yeah. I will admit that, yes, he's made me love curves. Okay. Danes? Yeah. I think we can... We can deal with Danes. Mm -hmm. The Dalmatian, though, I don't. I think the Dalmatian is the highest from this in her. Yeah, but the Great Dane's a working dog, too. Yeah. And that's. But I will say thank you, little Miss Maddie, because we did find that beagles are not our stretch, if you will. Yeah. You know, different be breeds for different families, you know. And if you guys are a very active family, yeah, I could suggest a beagle to you. Yeah, you if you know, guys she's are a very, very high strung dog. She is. So if you guys like to jog, like to go running, like to go walking, hiking, camping, some stuff like that, she'd be fine. Just... She, would, she would be your best friend. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, Maddie is not up for adoption. None of our dogs are. No. These are our personal dogs but the beagle also digs holes in yards so be aware the side the side that you don't see about her is for one the obsessive amount of polishing that she does now i don't know if that's like a full-on beagle thing or like what it is we have yet to find a vet that can figure out whether that's OCD or an allergy of some sort. And or we, something else. We've been told both. Yes. So. But yeah. Beagles. Not. Not our pace. Curves. Yeah. 
the one problem with cars is that they they tend to gain and shed weight in noticeable amounts. Well, yeah, they even, even mom said it too. I was like, did you notice that he seems a little bit heavier? Mm hmm. You know, and she's like, yeah, I can, I, I, I see that. I agree with that. So the backstory with the blackmouth curs is that they were bred by the settlers um, to herd cattle, watch the kids, defend the ranches, things like all and all of the above. It wasn't you had separate dogs. You had one dog to do it all. And that's like I said, we did get really, really lucky with him. So and all, all it really means is that somebody bred him and either he got out and got loose somehow. Or when there was something going on with him that the breeder didn't want him. Mm. You know, so yeah. we did, we got very, very lucky with him. Yep, and he's he's the bestest boy. And we're so, they're so obedient. They don't take to... They don't take criticism uh, or... Who was that? What? Package. No. Sorry, guys. There was somebody standing at the front door. I saw I walk away, and I was like, hmm. I'm kind of stuck in behind the camera at the moment. Yeah. We we got really lucky with him because I we did do a DNA test on him and Zena. What did they have her? Somehow. I think they just had Dalmatian with her. Anyway, they thought he was a boxer pit bull mix. And I'm like, I can see the pit bull. I can see the boxer because of uh, the nose coloring, but the nose is too is still too long. Yeah. But, you know, he's he's a good boy. And for those of you who have kids and are thinking about a black mouth cur, they're good dogs. They're very loyal. They'll watch the kids to no end. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to playtime, they can get a bit rough. They can get a little bit snippy. They can. So you might want to consider, you know, if you get one, make sure that the kids realize that if, he, if the dog starts to get snippy, it's time to quit. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's sometimes... I don't understand why some a lot of parents don't uh, explain that to their kids. If the dog is getting snippy, quit. Well, see, and that's, that's the other thing. Like, with in regards to service dog work, if you're letting your kid come up to a service dog, you don't know that dog. You, you don't. don't know it. You go, oh, well, you're, you're this, you're that. No. Excuse me, you don't know the way that my dog's trained. The only reason you guys know is because I choose to put it on the internet. Yep. But if there was a kid coming up to my dog, I would be like, no, don't touch him. He's working. You know, when I start getting snippy, back the hell off. Yeah. Because <laughs> in this case, it's not the dog you have to worry about. It's me. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, I'll fall on that, you know. I, there's been a couple situations where I've gotten a little bit snippy. I probably shouldn't have, but that's that's the way it ended up being, you know. A couple years ago, we were at um, can't, I'm sorry, you guys, I'm dealing with a lot of brain fog currently. Mm hmm. Because it's well past your bedtime. Um, King Supers. King Supers. Was it King Supers or... Uh, the, the lady on the other side. Oh, look at the bunny! Oh, I don't know. We get that so much that I don't anyway, know. We were somewhere, and I turned around at the lady, and I was like, you don't want to be quiet. Ooh, I'm sorry. I'm like, this is a working dog. You don't do that. Like, I don't need your help. Thanks. And the other thing is, we say no touch, no talk, no eye contact for a reason. Mm-hmm. Because the, the dog needs to pay attention to what it's doing because it's working. And, and you know, bad things can happen with some of, the, some of these dogs if they miss an alert, you know? Yeah. And, 
you don't want to be the one to have to explain that you distracted the lady's dog while after she's had a seizure and cracked her head on on the floor. Um, you know that that's just bad juju, and you don't want to do that. So it's not that we that we care whether you pet the dog or not. It's the distraction part. It's like she just said a really good example. You know, if Maddie were to miss an alert. Thank God she hasn't, you know, but I've heard of a couple situations where, like, you see on the dog, seizure alert. You know, okay, this person, is, but you knowingly come up and distract the dog, and you know you're doing it. Huh? Five, five minutes. Four? Five minute warning. For what? It's 26 minutes long already. Oh shit, oh. But you, the part that makes a lot of service dog handlers mad is we put patches and we put signs on the dog for a reason. You know, if you're like me and you choose not to mark while you have the dog, that's completely fine too. You know, my dog's best is not. My dog's nest is not, you don't see why I have it. The whole yep. purpose of him is he's multi-purpose. Yeah. He does medical alert as well as psychiatric alert as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Maddie is solely medical. Yeah. The only reason that I have two dogs is Maddie naturally alerted as a puppy to the epilepsy. Yeah. Okay. He's not taught that. He doesn't know anything to do with that. No. But you wouldn't know that. You know? Like, there's a lot of people who go around saying respect the best. This is the best. Okay? Yeah. No touch, no talk, no eye contact. We say that for a reason. Yeah, it's it's not like the, the old 70s Volkswagen bus where you just paint whatever on it. That That's not the idea of having a sticker or the signs on the dog. It's to, to inform the general public on, you know... Yes, you can. Yes, yeah. you can pet the dog. No, you can't pet the dog. Back you know. off and leave it alone. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's that's the other thing. You know, part of Mufasa's training is cardiac alert. Uh huh. You know, there's shit going on with my heart that you can't see. Why? Because it's on the inside. But this is what we try to show you guys. You know. Mm -hmm. I'm tired to the point of I can barely, just barely be able to get around right now. Yep. Well, and we're about out of time for this episode, so. Yeah. The rest of it is basically going to be me putting the wifey to bed, getting her undressed, and setting up the TV so that she can have her stuff at night, and, you know, all of that. So I'm going to be busy for a bit longer, and then I'm going to sit in the chair for a while and let my back chill and take another round of pain meds. Well, and... We don't, we don't choose, if you come up and you say, hey, I'm a subscriber of yours, so that we love the videos, something like that, you know, yeah. we might let you say hi, but just know that if we're having a hard day, it's not because we don't want you to touch the dog, just keep in mind that you're special to us in a way that you know about our channel, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't, it's not that I don't want you to pet him. It's either I'm having a really bad day or I'm having a very stressful day. If I'm having a good day, yeah, I might let you pet my dogs. But it's good practice for them to come back and get their attention back onto me. Yep. And I, my, her alerts aren't as critical. Zena's alerts to me aren't as critical as Mufi's alerts to my wife. So it's easier for me to let her get her attention than it would be for my wife to let Mufi get his. So just yeah. keep that in mind as well. You know, yeah. my, my blood sugar, unless it, it's going to go like a rocket ship to 600, isn't going to affect me that much. Well, but, and not only that, Zena's kept you under 600. She's kept me under 200, usually. Yeah. She the highest, the highest she's let me go is about two forty. Yeah, she's good. All right, you guys, I'm gonna get ready for bed. I am to the point of almost passing out sitting up. So I'm 
I'm gonna go to bed. I love you guys. I hope you guys are having a good day. We have some best reviews hopefully coming out soon. Um, maybe I might show you guys how to finish best. Make the best. Bye guys.